Anyway, um, Mr. McNamara, what has the impact been of 20 mile per hour speed limits on your members? In a word, devastating. Um, the, the argument for lower speeds is obviously clear. The safety arguments are, are, are clear and, and, and unequivocal, really, um, on secondary roads. And by secondary roads, I mean small side streets, roads outside here, the residential roads that we live on, all of the side streets. I don't think anyone would argue against 20 mile an hour speed limits, certainly not us. But since the Mayor's uh, introduction onto the TLA, TLRN, um, and we're looking at roads like the Finchley Road, which is a three-lane dual carriageway in either direction. If you look at Park Lane, which is, again, was you know, four lanes in either direction and previously was a 40 mile an hour limit, we are now seeing a situation where I have got, it's not hundreds yet, but it's many, many dozens of members who are now out of work and unlicensed, some of whom have been driving a cab for 40 years with an absolutely faultless driving record, no complaints at TfL, uh, no accident record, absolutely zero points or endorsements in the 40 years that they've been driving, have found themselves with 12 points in absolutely no time at all. And it's very easy for people to say, well, you know, 20 mile an hour limit, you know what it is, it's, it, it's 20 mile an hour. And of course, during the day, it's quite easy to maintain 20 mile an hour. In most parts of London, you, you, you can't do that anyway, we'd wish you could. But at four o'clock in the morning, if you're coming down Park Lane, which was previously 40, it's just, a, a, you know, as recently as a year ago, you're coming down Park Lane at 20 mile an hour and the vehicle creeps up to 24 mile an hour and it now coincides that the, the criteria for prosecution by the police is now 10% plus one. It used to be 10% plus three, so you now get a ticket of 24 mile an hour. And I can literally give you multiple examples of drivers that have been caught at 24, 24, 24 and 24 at all hours of the night and have lost their licenses. Now, I accept the simple argument, well, you shouldn't have done it, but of course in the real world, these people are not a danger to anyone. They're not driving recklessly. They're not, you know, driving, a, and, and, and a year ago it, it, in Park Lane, they would have been driving at under half of the speed limit. It's, these have had a major, major impact. And unfortunately for us, it's now come on, it, we've got a perfect storm. Transport for London have introduced a new driver policy. Uh, the driver policy has been an absolute disaster for us. It coincides with a, a, a reorganisation of their appeal process. So the way it works is if your licence gets suspended or revoked, you have an appeal process to TfL. Under the old system, it was dealt with by two former licensing officers, the people who used to have Helen's job years ago. You would appeal before them. They would make a recommendation. They would listen to you, and they would make a recommendation to TfL whether you should have a license or not. That's now dealt with internally by the same people who refuse you a license in the first place, by the same department. Now, they might be sitting at a different desk in the corner, but it's made by the same team. Our argument is that goes totally against all natural justice whatsoever. I don't come in front of you, Keith, and you make a decision, and then I come back and appeal to Caroline, who's sitting in the desk opposite. It doesn't happen, although she would probably agree with me. But <laughs> the point... No, the, the point is the whole process has come together to give this perfect storm. Driving a taxi is now one of the most stressful occupations on the planet by the sheer number of cameras, by the plethora of unnecessary 20 mile an hour limits, all of which is coming together to make cab driving the most stressful thing. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read the paragraph of a letter out. Before I came here this morning, actually I was given it yesterday, this is now typical and I, of a letter that one of my members got yesterday morning, and my members get these by the dozen from TfL, and I can arrange to share it, and Helen will have seen it. So this letter starts, Dear Mr, and I've obviously blanked his name out, London Taxi Driver's Licence. We have received notification of an adverse nature regarding your fitness to be licensed in line with our policies and regulatory requirements. We have considered if it is appropriate for you to continue to be licensed. Your livelihood is now under threat. So what heinous offence has this man committed? And incidentally, this guy's been driving a cab for 35 years, never had a point, never had a complaint. This is what he's done. 
We have received notification on the 5th of January from the DVLSA, DVLA, you received three points on the 19th of October. The verbatim of the allegation, and it mentions Uber because they use standard letters, they just copy and paste and forget to take the bits out, so that's just wrong, but we'll, we'll excuse that. The verbatim of the allegation, SP30, exceeding statutory speed limit on a public road. So this guy has done more than 30 mile an hour and he's got three points and he gets that letter. It is outrageous. It is absolutely outrageous. The driver policy that they've now got is if you get six points or what they deem a serious offence, and so I'll give you another <coughs> verbatim example. One of my members did a U-turn, was stopped by the police, and basically the police said he drove without due care and attention because he did a U-turn without looking, they said. Unfortunately, he pleaded guilty by letter, didn't think it was a big event, got three points. So that indicates to you that it's very much at the lower end of the scale because driving without due care and attention, you can get anything up to 12 points. So he got three points, which is the minimum. So it's obviously a very minor offence. His licence has been suspended. The man is out of work. It's absolutely crazy, this new policy that they've introduced. Then coupled with the appeal process that we have to go through, where we appear before the same people who have made the decision to revoke your licence, in all essence, Helen will tell you it's not, it's the same department, it's the same people. It goes against all natural justice. We then have to fund an appeal to a magistrate's court and try and get it overturned at a magistrate's court. What we are seeing now, we're talking, one of the reasons that we're sitting here today, you're talking about the decline of the black cab, and we can't get people to come into the industry. One of the key reasons people are leaving the industry is because it is so stressful. I've already told you London is the most camera city in the world, and, and all day long we're getting tickets, you've done a U-turn here, you've done this, you've done that, and, and all of... Would be, the difference between driving a taxi and driving a car, so I presume that most of you drive, obviously you probably don't, Sean, but most people do drive at some time or they get driven or somebody's got a car or whatever. No, I'm being, I'm, I'm, I'm being flippant. When you do it, you've got your husband, your wife, you've got the kids in the car, whatever, and you're going where you're going, you might have the sat nav on, fine. When you're driving a taxi, you've got somebody sitting in the back who is telling you where to go, they want to get there as quickly as they can. Why are you going this way? My normal driver goes that way. Can you do a U-turn here? I want to go that way. Oh, hang on. And, 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 by, and by the way, the dog's barking. And, and, and by the way, can I, what time selfish? It's a very, very different occupation to driving normally. And unfortunately, because of the nature of that and the fact that you're driving for 8, 10 or 12 hours a day, in central London, the odds on you creeping up to 24 mile an hour at 3 o'clock in the morning, it's almost inevitable. It is inevitable. Does, I'm not trying to defend it, but it's inevitable. It's not the heinous crime that, 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 that TfL make it out to be. Can I, can I just... Uh, uh, we're actually coming to the end of the meeting pretty rapidly, but I, I, I think it was important. <laughs> I think it was important that you, you gave us that information. I'll, I'll get this is letter worth, circulated. Is it worth comparing... Uh, what you've just said with the actual accident statistics related to black cabs vis-a-vis um, -vis other, other vehicles um, because I think that might t uh, reinforce your, your, your story. Uh, look, we have almost come to the end. I would have loved to have gone along the line and asked about this issue. It's not going to happen. However, there, there was a whole line of questioning that I wanted to do which I'm, I'm not going to do now because I think I'll be lynched. Um, and, and that is Miss Chapman. I'm, I'm interested in knowing the internal organisation of the licensing function within uh, within TFL, who, who they were, who who they report to, who who holds them to account. Um, one of the things I've raised with my colleagues here is I'm very concerned that this committee has only ever, only called you in front of us once every five years. And I don't think that's enough. Um, and I, I, I do think that we, we in future, uh, probably need to pay more attention to uh, PHV and black cabs on a, on a more regular basis. Um, so th th if you could send me the internal organisation and what legislation governs you as well would be very, very helpful. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. That's, um, Helen, that's okay with you? Yep. 
Yes, that's fine. And we can provide some details in, in writing in response to some of the points that Steve has raised.